Welcome to Voices of Experience, the official podcast of the National Speakers Association. I'm your host, technology strategist and futurist, Crystal Washington. Have you ever wondered how you can turn your book or speech into long-term training contracts? Today's topic is six-figure training packages, and our guest, Dr. Jeffrey McGee, will share his three-step formula for doing just that. Are you ready? Let's go. On this segment of Voices of Experience, we have a very special treat. With us today, we have Dr. Jeffrey McGee. To tell you a little bit about Dr. Jeffrey McGee, he averages 100 plus keynotes and professional development training days every year. I don't know when he sleeps. He's built a $117 million training firm and recently sold it earning seven figures as a solo practitioner. He has three trade books that have earned bestseller status with Wiley and McGraw-Hill, and he has a 90% conversion rate in audience sales with a proven three-step formula. Who better to speak with us about six-figure training packages? Thank you so much for being here with us today, Jeff. Thank you. So let's just dive right on in. My first question for you, with all of your experience we just talked about is, what are the first three steps for speakers wanting to move from one-time gigs to training contracts? Great, 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 great question. Everyone in this industry, as you could have the same conversation with any industry, the trap that we all fall into when you're in an industry is you start to figure out what you believe is your comfort zone. And once you figure out what your comfort zone is, the downside to that statement is that your brain starts calibrating to do things that you're most comfortable with doing, Mm. which then means it's like putting blinders on your head. You miss all the opportunities. So silly quick example. So for all of our listeners right now, if you'll just take your hands and cup them up against your head, unless you're driving your car, and just kind of you know put those hands up to like blinders so all you see is in front of you. That's kind of your comfort zone, whether you are on diversity or safety or leadership or life balance or sales or whatever. But if you take those hands and just move them back about 20, 25, 30, 40%, you start to get more peripheral vision left and right. Mm-hmm. And now move your hands completely away and you have better sight. So the three-step formula really starts with... You've got to get out of your own comfort zone to see what the market opportunities are like right in front of you. Mm. So the company that I was a part of, while it was a very large company, 144 employees and great revenue, I was one-third of it. So when I sold out my one-third piece of that, it gave me an opportunity to step back and say, okay, what do I want to do? The trap there, again, is your comfort zone. I had to be careful not to put my hands back up on my head. So if you take your hands away and look at what your number two answer is, what is really your unique IP? What's your intellectual property? Not the person sitting next to you left and right. Whenever you go to any trade conference, if you're a doctor, an accountant, a realtor, or a professional speaker, Mm -hmm. the problem is is that we we fall into the shiny object syndrome. Whatever someone else is doing, we get excited and we all want to go do it as well. Yes. I want to be Dr. Jeff. And I don't want to be you, Chris. (laughs) So you've got to recognize what is your intellectual property. Because if you know what your intellectual property is, then you go back to what are the market opportunities where I can apply my real IP. Mm. And so in my workshop, I taught three formulas, and one is called the Player Capability Index Model. That's kind of my unique IP, my secret sauce. So the Player Capability Index Model is a formula that I've kind of created myself as a performance psychologist. Mm -hmm. And I've been using it for decades in my books, in my training, in my keynotes. So you as a listener, you've got to figure out what is your unique IP. And so I I, I share it through this formula, and we don't have time on this podcast to get into that, Mm -hmm. but a way to kind of think about it is if you have a LinkedIn profile, Mm -hmm. it's the world's best networking connection resume builder. Because if you think about the template to put out your profile and you answered every single question, Mm -hmm. and don't embellish, but don't be humble. But if you answered every question fully and then hit submit, you would have a phenomenal profile. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like old school of writing your resume or old school going and applying for a job and he actually gave you an application. So the application were questions, those were prompts, trying to find out what makes you unique, what's your intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Your resume, same thing. Each of those categories was you revealing what makes you unique, intellectual property. LinkedIn, each of those categories is what makes you unique. So what I'm getting at, if everyone wants to really back up and say, what's the market opportunity, step one, two, what really makes me unique? I've got a great formula I use, but your easy way is, what's your education? doesn't matter if it's formal or informal, technical, non-technical, certification, non-certification. What's your experiences? What are the jobs you've had? Where have you fallen on your 
your face. Those are more important than just where you succeeded because real life lessons come from how you get up. Right. Keep in mind, Gallup Organization did a massive survey a couple years ago, and I know a lot of consultants and speakers and coaches use it. I use it. I actually have my own model I've used for 25 years, and so the Gallup survey just validates what I've already been saying. And that's basically 56% of everyone in America is complacent, disengaged. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a little bit of a shock jock when I talk, so well, let's call it something else. 56% of everyone that's out there is pathetically worthless and lazy. Oh. So if you want to grow your business, you've got to recognize don't talk to those people because they love misery. And what's the old adage about misery? Yeah, misery loves company. company. But see, you've got to know your IP. That's a part of what makes me unique. I don't offend people. Yeah. I try not to go across that line. But I do believe people need to be shaken and awakened. So that's one. Second element then is that 15% of people, Gallup say, are actively disengaged. These are people that get up every day and look for a cause that they can join where they can complain all day long. Find a way to undercut you. Okay. Instead of celebrating success, we have to find out, well, Crystal has to have a skeleton or a closet. Let's go find that one. Mm-hmm. It's like everyone's trying to knock people down. And then what Gallup found was that of the survey, massive across the U.S., 29% of people are actively engaged. So the third step to, to building a six, seven-figure income, and one of the things I talk about in a program at NSA is how do you get the six and seven-figure contracts? Mm-hmm. How do you get year-long contracts versus a one-time event or gig? Right. And so I realized it takes the same amount of energy to get a year-long relationship with a business or an association as it does one. And that was a huge epiphany and change in my business model. When now all of a sudden you're signing contracts for six figures minimum and going up from there. And anyone who has real IP, number two, and is willing to take the blinders off and see the opportunities of how to help people can do that. So you want to fish where the fish is. I hate adages. I love adages. It doesn't matter what your view is. I personally love them. So you want to find out where the 29% of the people in the marketplace that want to play with you. Don't worry about the 15 percent and don't worry about the 56. So for those of us that are listening that are sold and we're like this sounds amazing and we're willing to go out there and look for the people that are actually looking for these solutions how can speakers repurpose their content for training? Brilliant question. So so there's a lot of people within NSA, and um, one of them is a gentleman from uh, the Nevada chapter that I'm a part of. Mm-hmm. He's doing a workshop also at this NSA conference. You guys can look him up. Uh, Stormy's his name. But you know whether you talk about looking at a customer and you're using the concept of uh, profile, that was the big word we used before. What's a profile characteristic of a good customer prospect? Mm-hmm. Then it was, you know, what's the buyer persona right. or what's the, what's a good avatar for you? So I don't care what label you use, but to answer your question, Crystal, it, you have to first have a really clear picture of who your IP would best fit with. Mm-hmm. So, for example, I've got some marquee clients. Clients, and people love to name drop, so hey, I'll do it too. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been working with Harley Davidson for two decades, Anheuser Busch for two decades, Boeing for two decades. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of you know uh, marquee companies, mm-hmm. but. What I've learned is that's not the best place for me to do my business, which was your question. Mm -hmm. So my profile customer, I realize, is a company that's somewhere around 500 million in revenue Mm -hmm. to about six, seven, eight billion in revenue. Okay. Because what I've realized in that swing is they have enough employees, that's critical mass, to be able to utilize my IP on a once a month basis for a minimum of a year. I can come in and I can work with them for one day a month and legitimately help them, because I've got legitimate IP, to grow them and develop them. They see, you know, from the KPIs, they see ROI every 30 days. Mm-hmm. So they're happy to see me come back. And that grows for a year. And within that year, then a lot of times they'll say, hey, can you also, maybe can you come in earlier next month and do some coaching with these people? So there's another way to repurpose my IP because now I'm applying it into coaching. Then they might okay. say, you know, I've got some other people. Can you do X, Y, and Z? You know, if you, if, if you look at repurposing your content, which is a great question you've asked, and please, if you're listening, Listen, Mm -hmm. repurposing your IP is how you grow this as a business. Most everyone in NSA are solo practitioners, truth be told. Right. And Stephen Tweed did a survey years ago when he was the NSA president. And I challenge every one of you to send an email to NSA headquarters and ask them to get that old copy of his survey and come back. It's been many years since Tweed did that survey, but I still would bet it's 99.9% still accurate. And it basically said the majority of everyone in NSA Mm -hmm. speaks to groups of about 50 people or less Mm -hmm. is the reality. Oh, wow. Most everyone in NSA actually makes around $100,000 or less. That's the reality. Wow. So there's a lot of embellishment that goes on, mm-hmm. which it's frustrating that that happens. Mm-hmm. But if you want to see how to really grow, you've got to be realistic. So mm-hmm. within that, if you're looking at repurposing your IP for keynotes, breakout sessions, workshops, seminars, mm-hmm. it's 
not going to a lot of times be huge groups. It might be that at an association level, right. but the spinoff of how you repurpose it is to get back to the smaller levels. If you're not familiar, listeners, with the concept of the spinoff model, you need to do some research with an NSA or reach out to Crystal Nine. I'll give you some information on that. Because once you understand the spinoff model, you'll see how to go up vertically, down horizontal, uh, down vertically, and horizontally with your clients, businesses, and contacts to get tons of money, which will give you the clues of repurposing. So notice you asked the question repurpose, mm -hmm. and instead of just answering it directly, I've given your listeners multiple ways to understand yeah. why you want to be repurposing. And, so different, you, and different types of repurposing as well. Absolutely. So you shared a couple different aspects on so that. So if you have content, then you think of it this way. If I'm doing a keynote, that's like giving the table of contents to a book. I'm going to give some highlights, maybe one deep dive. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a book, each of those chapters is, is worthy of a seminar. That's okay. how you see it. Therefore, each of those chapters can be spun off in little e-books. Mm -hmm. They can be white papers. They can be articles. They can be podcasts. They can be blogs. They can be articles you repurpose to trade journals online, hard print. You know, the repurposing of your content should be exactly where you are every time you look at anything you do. Okay, so I'm curious. And, and I'm not going to be able to hear your answer, listeners, but for all of you that had an epiphany when he just talked about a chapter in your book, every chapter is a different talk and spinning that off into different things. If you just had an epiphany, I just need you to scream wherever you're at. Just get excited. I, I know you. I just was struck by lightning. So just curious. So just be honest about that. My last question for you today, Jeff, is, is there any technology programs or hardware that you find particularly helpful in crafting training programs? Yeah, and that's a great question. So for the listeners, let me, let me give you... Um, kind of a sketched out answer. So okay. the company that, that I was a part of for many years, we had 144 employees. So I had the luxury mm -hmm. of great minds, great people, great great colleagues, and they had lots of the answers to that question. We had the resources, the technology. We had our own studio. Um, you know, we flew a lot of the marquee members of NSA into Bozeman, Montana and videotaped self-study programs with them and et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of technology that's out there. So that's my cop-out answer. But where I want to get more specific is I don't want the listeners to be misled into thinking they have to have technology, they have to have you know AI, they have to have all these resources. Yes, there's a ton out there. I'll give you some answers, okay. and there's ways to do it. But you don't have to, as a member of this organization, have to have the pressure of oh crap, I have to go do this. I've got to buy this. Right. So yes, there are there are tools out there for crafting um, content, crafting uh, workshops and seminars. Mm -hmm. But let me answer it this way. Okay. The norm in the training world mm -hmm. for doing a workshop is typically six six hours of content as a class. Right. So if you take that six hours, whether you start at eight in the morning, nine in the morning, or you do shift training and you're doing something 11 at night, 12 at night, mm -hmm. Pause, NSA listeners. I just gave you another million dollar clue. Mm -hmm. Most everyone in NSA does their workshops when they're awake, nine to five. Right. If you're working with organizations that have two and three shifts, and you offer that HR training person or business owner to come in and do a program for their for the people that are working five to eleven, twelve, wow. they will blow up with a smile. You talk about coming and do a workshop for the people working from eleven at night until seven in the morning, they will blow up with a smile because wow. no one does it. Right. So United Technologies was a huge client of mine for many many years. And I, as well as my staff, went in to do training. And it was because we were doing shift training. Okay. So now back to your answer. So if you think of a training program, everyone, it's usually six hours as a norm model. Okay. So if you take a six-hour program, you typically start, and you've got about 90 minutes, and then you take a morning break. Mm -hmm. Then you come in, and you do roughly another hour-ish to 90 minutes, and you break for lunch. Mm -hmm. You come back in the afternoon, you do an hour to 90 minutes, you take a break. And then you come back and do an hour to 90 minutes, and day is done. Mm -hmm. So if you think of a day-long training program, you want to break it down into four modules is what you just did. Okay. What's my first module? module, turnkey, so that I end at a point that if I had to stop there and, and Crystal had to leave the room, she comes back from break, I build on that with my next module. You come back from lunch. So you want to design them that way. Mm -hmm. So therefore, in your modules, it's very simple. You want to present some content, so mm -hmm. tee up what you're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Then you want to have some sort of activity to get them involved, whether it's a one personal activity, mm -hmm. didactic, two people pair off in the audience, mm -hmm. where you make little teams of three, four, five, or six, and you have them workshop what you've just presented, whether it's a workshop where they discuss it and come up with some answers or you give them an activity and they do something. I mean, some of you are much better with activities than I am. And then you debrief that. And then you just keep going back and forth. That's the easiest way to design any content and curriculum and you don't need any software to do that. Voices of Experience is brought to you by... Let me ask you something. Are you sick of the ebb and flow of revenue in your business? Are you tired of not having a process you can prioritize every day that guarantees results and scalability? What about all of the technology that's not working for you? SpeakerFlow is the only company geared towards helping speakers achieve predictable revenue by leveraging technology to get organized, get known, and get paid. 
Whether it's our CRM, consulting, or our mansion retreats, we've got you covered. Stop by speakerflow.com to schedule a free discovery call today. Thank you for tuning in to Voices of Experience, the podcast of the National Speakers Association. Catch us on your favorite podcast app, YouTube, and NSA's social media profiles. Tune in next week when we'll discuss how you can influence hearts and minds by capturing your audience's attention with curiosity and your team's hearts with empathy.